Come along, Henry, it's time your train was ready. Henry's not going, said Gordon. We won't shunt like common tank engines. That was Thomas's job. We are important tender engines. You fetch our coaches and we will pull them. Tender engines don't shunt. Oh, indeed, said the fat controller. We'll see about that. Engines on my railway do as they are told. And he hurried away to find Edward. The yard has never been the same since Thomas left to run his branch line, he thought sadly. Edward was shunting. Leave those trucks, please, Edward, said the fat controller. I want you to push coaches for me in the yard. Thank you, sir. That will be a nice change. That's a good engine. Off you go, then. So Edward found coaches for the three engines, and that day the trains ran as usual. Next morning, Edward looked unhappy. Gordon came clanking past, hissing rudely. Bless me, said the fat controller. What a noise. They all hiss me, sir, answered Edward. They say tender engines don't shunt, and last night they said I have black wheels. I haven't, have I, sir? No, Edward, you have nice blue ones, and I'm proud of you. Tender engines do shunt. But all the same, we do need another tank engine here. He went to a workshop and they showed him all sorts of engines. At last he saw a smart little green engine with four wheels. That's the one, he thought. If I choose you, will you work hard? Oh, sir, yes, sir. That's a good engine. I'll call you Percy. Yes, sir, thank you, sir, said Percy. And the fat controller brought him back to the yard. Edward, he called. Here's Percy. Will you show him everything? Percy soon learned what he had to do, and they had a happy afternoon. Then Henry came by, hissing as usual. Cheese! When Percy. Henry jumped and ran back to the shed. How beautifully you weeshed him, laughed Edward. I can't weesh like that. Oh, said Percy, that's nothing. You should hear them in the workshop. You have to weesh loudly to make yourself heard. Percy was left alone. He didn't mind that a bit. He liked watching trains and being cheeky to the other engines. Hurry, 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 he would call, and they got very cross. After a great deal of shunting, Percy was waiting for the signalman to set the point so that he could get back to the yard. He was eager to work, but was being rather careless and not paying attention. Edward had warned Percy, be careful on the main line, whistle to the signalman, you are there. But Percy didn't remember to whistle, so the busy signalman forgot him. Percy waited and waited. The points were still against him, so he couldn't move. Then he looked along the main line. He whistled in horror, for rushing straight towards him was Gordon with the express. Oh, groaned Gordon. Get out of my way. Percy opened his eyes. Gordon had stopped with Percy's buffers a few inches from his own. But Percy had begun to move. I won't stay here. I'll run away, he puffed. He went straight through Edward's station and was so frightened that he ran right up Gordon's Hill without stopping. After that, he was tired, but he couldn't stop. He had no driver to shut off steam and apply the brakes. I want to stop. I want to stop, he puffed. The man in the signal box saw Percy was in trouble, so kindly set the points. 
Percy puffed wearily onto a nice empty siding, ending in a big bank of earth. He was too tired now to care where he went. I want to stop. I want to stop. I have stopped, he puffed thankfully. Never mind, Percy, said the workman as they dug him out. You shall have a drink and some coal and then you'll feel better. Presently, Gordon arrived. Well done, Percy. You started so quickly that you stopped a nasty accident. I'm sorry I was cheeky, said Percy. You were clever to stop. Henry was ready at five o'clock. There was snow and frost. Men hustled and shouted, loading the vans with crates of fish. The last door banged, the guard showed his green lamp. The flying kipper was ready to go. Come on, come on, don't be silly, don't be silly, puffed Henry to the vans. The vans shuddered and groaned, trock, trick, trock, trick, all right, all right. That is better, that is better, puffed Henry. Clouds of smoke and steam poured from his funnel into the cold air, and the fire's light shone brightly. Hurry, 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 panted Henry. They were going well. The light grew better. Signal light shone green as they passed. Then a yellow signal appeared ahead. His driver prepared to stop, but the home signal was down. All clear, Henry. Away we go. They couldn't know the points from the main line to a siding were frozen, and the home signal should have been set at danger, but snow had forced it down. A goods train was waiting in the siding to let the flying kipper pass, and the driver and fireman were drinking cocoa in the brake van. The kipper is due, said the guard. Who cares, said the fireman. This is good cocoa. The driver got up. Come on, fireman, back to our engine. They got out just in time. Henry's driver and fireman had jumped clear before the crash, but Henry lay dazed and surprised. The fat controller came to see him. The signal was down, sir, said Henry. Cheer up, Henry, it wasn't your fault. Ice and snow caused the accident. I'm sending you to crew a fine place for sick engines. They'll give you a new shape and a larger firebox. You'll feel a different engine and won't need special coal anymore. Won't that be nice? Yes, sir, said Henry doubtfully. A lady and a stout gentleman stood on Toby's platform. He was, of course, the fat controller, but Toby didn't know this yet. Come on, grandfather, cried the children. Do look at this engine. That's a tram engine, Stephen, said the fat controller. Is it electric? asked Bridget. Hush, hissed Toby. Shh, shh, said her brother. You've offended him. But trams are electric, aren't they? They are mostly, but this is a steam tram. May we go in it, grandfather? Please? Stop, said the fat controller to the guard. They all scrambled into Henrietta. Hip, hip, hooray, chanted Henrietta. But Toby did not sing. Electric indeed, electric indeed, he snorted. He was very hurt. What is your name? asked the fat controller. Toby, sir. Thank you, Toby, for a very nice ride. Thank you, sir, said Toby. He felt better now. This gentleman, he thought, is a gentleman who knows how to speak to engines. The children came every day for a fortnight. Sometimes they rode with the guard, sometimes in empty trucks. 
On the last day of all, the driver invited them into his cab. All were sorry when they had to go away. And the fat controller and his family thanked everyone. Come again soon, replied Toby. We will, we will, call the children. And they waved till Toby was out of sight. The months passed. Toby had few trucks and fewer passengers. Our last day, Toby, said his driver one morning. The manager says we must close tomorrow. That day, everyone wanted the chance of a last ride. The passengers joked and sang, but Toby and his driver wished they wouldn't. Goodbye, Toby, said the passengers afterwards. We are sorry your line is closing down. So am I, said Toby. Nobody wants me, Toby thought, and went on happily to sleep. The fat controller was having breakfast. He was eating toast and marmalade. The butler came in. Excuse me, sir, you are wanted on the telephone. Bother that telephone, said the fat controller. <laughs> I'm sorry, my dear, he said to his wife. Thomas is in trouble with the police, and I must go at once. At the station, Thomas's driver told the fat controller what had happened. Dangerous to the public, indeed. We'll see about that. The fat controller spoke to the policeman. But however much he argued with him, it was no good. The law is the law, he said, and we can't change it. The fat controller felt exhausted. I'm sorry, driver, he said. It's no use arguing with policemen. We will have to make those cowcatcher things for Thomas, I suppose. Everyone will laugh, sir, said Thomas. They'll say I look like a tram. The fat controller stirred. Then he laughed. Well done, Thomas. Why didn't I think of it before? We want a tram engine. When I was on my holiday, I met a nice little engine called Toby. He takes trucks from the farms, but the lorries are taking over most of his work and he needs a change. He has cow catchers and side plates. I'll write to his controller at once. A few days later, Toby arrived. That's a good engine, said the fat controller. I see you've brought your coach, Henrietta. You don't mind, do you, sir? asked Toby. The station master wanted to use her as a hen house, and that would never do. No, indeed, said the fat controller. We couldn't allow that. <laughs> Toby made the silly trucks behave even better than Thomas did. First, Thomas was jealous, but he was so pleased when Toby rang his bell and frightened the policeman, they've been firm friends ever since. Wake up, Gordon, said his driver. A special train's coming, and where to pull it? Is it coaches or trucks? Trucks, said his driver. Trucks, said Gordon. Puh! Gordon's fire was slow to start, so Edward had to push Gordon to the turntable to get him facing the right way. I won't go, I won't go, grumbled Gordon. Don't be silly, don't be silly, puffed Edward. At last Gordon was on the turntable. 
The movement had shaken his fire. It was now burning nicely and making steam. Gordon was cross and didn't care what he did. He waited till the table was halfway round. I'll show them, I'll show them, he hissed. He moved slowly forward to jam the table, but he couldn't stop himself and slithered into a ditch. Ooh, she hissed. Get me out, get me out. Not a hope, said his driver and fireman. You're stuck, you silly great engine. Don't you understand that? They telephoned the fat controller. So Gordon didn't want to take the special train and ran into a ditch. What's that you say? The special's waiting. Tell Edward to take it, please. And Gordon? Oh, leave him where he is. We haven't time to bother with him now. On the other side of the ditch, some little boys were chattering. Cool, doesn't he look silly? They'll never get him out. They began to sing. Silly old Gordon fell in a ditch, fell in a ditch, fell in a ditch. Silly old Gordon fell in a ditch all on a Monday morning. Gordon lay in the ditch all day. Oh dear, he thought, I shall never get out. That evening, they lifted Gordon and made a road of sleepers under his wheels to keep him from the mud. Strong ropes were fastened to his back end, and James and Henry, pulling hard, managed to bring him to safety. Gordon crawled home, a sadder and wiser engine.